this morning, the theme is based on an army. You know, an army is a very interesting unit. It's disciplined, it's organized, it's hierarchical, it has a single-minded goal, but it is controlling. I must confess to you, when I was young, when I was a child, I never enjoyed uniform groups because I found them very controlling. I thought all the shouting of, yes sir, no sir, all it would do is give you, give you an ulcer. So I never joined, I never joined scouts, I never joined. The army is very, very interesting, but very, very different from our society. In the army, you can't just do what you want to do. But in society, like all of us here, we want to do whatever we want to do. Much less, we all don't like people who breathe down our neck and control us. You know, children, some of you children here, when you go to school, some of you may feel that your school teacher is like an army general. When I was a kid, you know, there was this Inchek Rajan. And he will always be very stout, very angry face, and he will carry a rotan and walk, pop, 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 as if though he's looking for somebody who will miss out a step and just give a good whack. So traumatized that 33 years later, I still remember Inchek Rajan. Controlling. Well, some of you kids may have that. Some of us have parents. Parents who are so controlling that we think our mom or dad came out from the army as well. But it's not only children. Adults as well. Some of you dread tomorrow. Because tomorrow you go back to work and some places of work have bosses who think that they're in the army. Five minutes late and your boss gives you a big scolding as if though it's the end of the world. Very controlling. The army basically uses strict rules and punishments in order to get things done in order to control its people. But the Bible, the Bible this morning, I want to tell you, tells us of a different army. An army that is just as efficient or perhaps more efficient than the army that we saw. An army that is disciplined, organized, with a single common goal, but not having the control structures, not having punishments, not having threats. Can you guess what army this is? Children, any guesses? What army? better than a human army? And the answer is ants. Can we have the picture of the ants? Ants. When there are many, many, many ants, like this in the picture, some of you feel you're very girly, right? The hair starts to stand up. When there are many, many ants, we call them an army of ants. And it's a very good term because ants are disciplined, organized, with a single common goal. But not having the controlling structure. Proverbs 6, verse 6 to 7 says, Go to the end, you sluggard. Sluggard means lazy person. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer, no ruler, no one shouting down their necks, like in the play. Yet it stores its provisions in summer, gathers its food at harvest. You know, for ends... They don't need punishment. They don't need threats to make them work. They don't have a king. They don't have a government. They don't have controlling bodies. But yet, as you saw in the picture, all will march together. Those of you who are housewives or in the house, in my house, there are a lot of ants. I get very irritated with ants. You drop some food and all the ants come already. And they all come in a single file. Who gave them the instructions? How come they know how to be so united and working so well together. I want to show you another picture. Can we have the next picture? What is this picture? It's actually, yeah, it's a red ants. It's red ants. And it's forming a bridge. Ants forming a bridge. They are able to work so well together. No overseer, no ruler, no commander. And they know how to form a bridge. Now, when I saw this picture, I was thinking, oh, yeah, the end a bit silly, you know. You form a bridge, but you yourself cannot cross what? Right? You're all tied together, stuck there. But if you watch the documentary, the whole purpose of this bridge is not for the end to cross, but for others to walk over it, carrying the food back to the nest. So selfless, so community-minded. How is it that these little creatures... With brains, I, I'm not sure whether ants got brains. Uh, maybe some of you scientists can tell me. But if they did have brains, they were so tiny. But yet, I think they do a lot better than even our kids here who have done so well this morning. How come? How come? 
It's as if though ants are wired to live and work together harmoniously, right? And how good it would be if we could be like ants, especially now here in Malaysia with all the recent issues with what happened yesterday. If only we could be like ants. Globally, there are so many tensions. Even children, children in school always have tension because they say, I friend you, you don't friend me. You friend that person, I don't. You, they form groups, they form gangs and become so difficult for some children. Some children don't like to go to school because of such tensions. So what is it that made this ends the way it is? My daughter, May Ann, my youngest daughter, has a word for very, very many. She called it bajillion. Okay? I, please excuse me, the Chinese and BM translated. There's no such English word, bajillion. Because she, there is a word that says there's so many of them. And you know, ants, there are bajillions of them. But not one single one of them falls out of line. Not one single one of them was like the corporal Mong Cha Cha, not paying attention. But every one of them, how is it? Ants don't go to school, right? And many of you kids wish you didn't have to go to school. Ants don't have the police or the MACC to enforce laws. They don't even have laws. But yet they function so well. Because you see, ants have been purposefully designed and fashioned to live, to work together. Ants have no commander, no ruler, no overseer, but they do have a maker. A maker who has purposefully designed and fashioned them to live the way they do. A maker who is God. And you and I, all of us here, from the back, I can't see the back because the lights are so bright, but from the back to the front, from my left to the right, from the little children to the elderly people, all of us here, we share the same maker as the ants. The same maker, the maker who is God. And you know, just like the ants, God has purposefully designed and fashioned us to live and work together. I say, Pastor, we are not exactly living and working together. We have a lot of problems from school right up to office, right up to national issues. The difference between you and I and the ants and a very, very big difference at that, is that we have chosen to live outside of God's original design for us. Ants cannot choose. They're made that way, they live that way. But we can choose. And the problem is, you and I, all of us, every single one of us, have chosen to live outside of God's design, the original design that we're supposed to be. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 6, that all we like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way. And that, my friends, is where all the problems come in. Just like we saw in the play. When the soldiers forgot that they are in the army, that their own sole purpose, single purpose, is to obey the command of the army, they started to think of the presence for themselves. They forgot. They stepped outside of the purpose of an army. Today is Children's Day, and parents, I want you to hear me. Because children who grow up in broken families, where they're divorced, separated, or parents that are always constantly fighting at home, these children will be negatively scarred for life. We may say that, well, I, I still provide a shelter over their head. I still give them good food. I give them education. I give them health care. I give them clothes, I give them toys. You can give them everything. But if the parents are not loving and the family is not loving, it is fundamentally a broken family, dysfunctional. Why? Because it has lost the original design of a family. And the original design for a family is love, peace, and harmony in the home, in the family. So you can have all these other things from food to the best iPhones that you give your child. But if love, peace, harmony is missing from the family, the child will be negatively scarred because it is outside of the original design. Children, imagine if I were to give you each an ice cream, all right? Ice cream cone with double scoop, your favorite flavor, 
chocolate, vanilla, salted caramel, I don't know. And to add to that, you can put on any topping you want. Sprinkle all the rainbows, all the Oreo crush. Now, I give you this ice cream. But you say, yeah, now I don't want to eat. Now quite cold in this auditorium here, quite cold. This afternoon, Daddy Mommy is going to take me to the swimming pool with the cousins. And I want to eat it there. So I'm going to hold my ice cream all the way until afternoon, then only I eat it. What will happen, children? Now, yeah, very good. So can you enjoy your ice cream in the afternoon then? It's quite yucky to eat melted hot ice cream. Why? What happened? Because an ice cream is meant to be eaten the minute it's scooped out of the coal. That is the original design of it. But if you choose to do something outside of the original design, or the intent, it is useless. It is wasted. And ladies and gentlemen, my friends, this happens in every facet of our lives, from marriages to community harmony, from workplace problems to national issues. All these problems come from a simple basic reason. We have gone outside of our original design. We cannot function, we cannot live like the ants do happily to the, together united because we have broken the original design. And so we struggle. We employ, we try all kinds of ways to make life work. We try so hard, and I want to use this illustration, it's like going to an exam, right? Some students, instead of studying hard for an exam, they will try all kinds of ways to get past it and still get a good mark. So what do they do? Some of them try to cheat. Now children, never try to cheat in the exam, okay? It's not a good thing to do. Some will try to do what? Polish the teacher's shoe. Everything made the teacher very happy, so the teacher gave better marks. Others, oh, you know, scribble the answers on the hand, and you realize, sweaty already, the answers all come out. So, put in the piece of paper, put it in the toilet, then afterwards, at the exam time, say, teacher, teacher, stomach ache, need to go to the toilet, then go and find the answers. I don't do that, right, children? But you, you, the children try so much ways to get past this exam, it would have been far better to use all that effort to go into studying the original intent, the original way of doing an exam. Just study. But that's what all of us do. Adults, we do that in our lives. Instead of just doing the original design, following God's ways, we try and struggle all through life to make our life work and make our life better. But more than that, friends, God is not so much just into getting things done. The ants basically are preoccupied with getting things done. But God is not. See, the Bible is not a manual you know, to teach you how to be successful. Christianity is not about do's and don'ts. Jesus Christ, thank God that He came and that's why we celebrate Christmas. But ultimately, He didn't come just to help you to take control of your life. Make sure all the circumstances fall into place, you live a happy life, and that's that. No. Consistently throughout the Bible, and we sang the praise song, Victoria led us in the praise song, the book, we opened the book and we look at it, referring to the Bible. Consistently throughout the Bible, what is paramount, what is supreme, what is most important to God? It's not getting things done, but it's about restoring and deepening relationships. You read your Bible. The Bible tells us that. That's why we come to church. That's why we are Christians. Not just to get things done in life, but to have our relationships restored and deepened with God and with one another. And that's why in the Bible, John chapter 1, verse 12 tells us that to all who did receive Jesus, to those who believed in Jesus' name, He gave the right to become children of God. God calls us His children. He doesn't call us believers, His soldiers, His workers. He doesn't call us uh, straight-A students. He doesn't call us a good employee. He calls us children. Because fundamentally to God, what is most important is not getting things done. It's the relationship. When relationships are in the right place, things get done. 
And so God calls you and I children. So while we celebrate Children's Day today, specifically for those age 11 and below, but all of us who are believers are children of God. Now, after the end of the service, every child will get, I think, popcorn, marshmallows, and other things. Only for 11 years old and below. Don't say, Pastor, say, I'm a child of God, so I can get. You want, you go and buy your own, all right? Only children age 11. But all of us are children of God if we are believers in Jesus. Today as a church, we are so happy, so, so, so happy that you're here to celebrate Children's Day. And parents, I want you to take this time now. Look at your child. Don't look at me now. You've got a child with you. Look at your child. Look at your child in the eyes. Okay? That is your child. That is the gift that God has given you. Keep looking. Okay? I know it feels very uncomfortable. All right? As Asians, we don't really show our love that much. But just do it. Just do it this morning. It's Children's Day for your child's sake. Look at your child. Your child is your child, the boy or the girl, or the children, not because he's a hardworking student. It's good to be a hardworking student. Your child is your child not because, oh, you know, he's great at ballet or great at swimming. Your child is your child not because, oh, you know, he, 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 he tidies up his room. He always says, yes, mommy, thank you, mommy. Yes, daddy, thank you, daddy. Your child is not just even your child just because you gave birth to that boy and that girl. Your child is your child because of the relationship. Parent to child. As you look at your child's eyes, do you have the relationship with your child? It's wonderful that you have provided for them all these years. It's wonderful you have given and sought to give them the best. But those things cannot replace a relationship. Children's Day to me is very important because we can learn so much from children. You know when children are born, when babies are born, they are very sticky to their mom and dad, isn't it? When you, we have a Tadika Calvary here, and sometimes we walk by the Tadika as we come to work, and you see, especially January is coming up, new kids are coming, and you see the children clinging on to the mother or father's leg, crying, don't want to go into the classroom. And you stand there and you watch, and you see the teachers doing their best to cajole, to, to win the child's heart. Say, come now, come, you know, we have very nice toys, we are showing a video, we have this, we have that, trying to speak in their nicest voice, but the child will still cling and cling and cry. Wanting the father, mother. Why? Because the child is still very much in his original, in his or her original design. Design for relationship. The child, the toddler, does not seek for things. Yes, of course, the child likes sweets and, uh, and ice cream and all that. But after a couple of hours, they want back their parents. See, when a child is born, they are very much still in the original design. Longing, desiring for relationship with their parents always. That's why they're sticky. But as they grow, as they become teenagers, they get influenced by the world, by our fallen nature, and so then they start to want things rather than wanting relationship. You know, the Bible tells us that this wanting to go our own way, this uh, uh, choosing outside of God's design, the Bible calls it sin. Sin is just simply doing things outside of God's ways. And so as the child grows, becomes a teenager, and slowly then becomes an adult like you and I, we are become so fixated, so focused on getting things done that it ruins our relationships. Parents start fighting with their children at home just because the child got 90 and didn't get 100. Getting things done. Why didn't you do this? Why can't you do that? And the drive for making life work, for getting things done, ruins relationship. And then when you come to the final end of life, as you become elderly, you come towards your deathbed, if you visit somebody who's very elderly, they're not going to sit there or lying down there telling you, hey, you know the time I got five A's, or hey, the time that I got a good contract, the time that I bought my first car, Elderly people talk about relationships. They recall back. And that's why elderly people like to see their grandchildren, like to see their children. To me, I think it is because as we get elderly, as we near our deathbed, we are getting back closer to our maker. And we are starting to catch back 
the understanding of our original design for relationship. Children's Day is a wonderful time to remind us that God's paramount is restoring and deepening relationships. Very importantly, not just relationships between one another, but with God, our maker, our designer. And that's what Christmas is all about. The angels proclaim, right? The angels proclaim, taken from the Bible in Luke chapter 2, verse 10, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Good news. Why good news? You open newspaper, it's always bad news. But this is good news. Why good news? Because good news, Jesus is taking us back to our maker, to our original design, to our heavenly Father. And Savior, why Savior? Because our sins, our going off our own ways, have ruined and destroyed our relationship with God and with one another. So we thank God for the good news and for the Savior. When my youngest daughter, may Ann, was five years old, our church was having a carnival. And this was being held at Taylor's Lakeside Campus, a very big place. I was tasked with taking care of my two girls while my wife went off to buy some food. I have to confess, I wasn't a good father then. Because I lost my daughter. I lost may Ann. We were talking. I was talking with my uh, eldest daughter. Then my wife came back and said, where's may Ann? I said, don't know, don't know. What do you mean, don't know? You are supposed to take care. Oh, you know, the panic that we as parents felt that we have lost May Ann. And really, we, we couldn't find May Ann. Oh, so we got so worried. So we started to tell our friends. We gave calls to different ones to say, can you find, can you look out for my daughter, those who know May Ann. And we even made an announcement over the PA system. If anyone found a young girl, five years old, wearing da-da-da-da-da, please. And you know where they found my daughter May Ann? By the way, I asked her permission to share this because she's in the sanctuary also, all right? They found her at the game stall there, crying. She had happily taken her tokens which she had won from a game stall. She wanted to go and exchange it for toys, which uh, good old daddy said, later, later, later. So she couldn't wait, so she went. And the person who found was Amelia. Amelia was a nursery care teacher. Amelia knew and know who Mayan was. And she straight away saw Mayan. We had called Amelia and asked her to look. We had sent Amelia out. And Amelia was the good news to Mayan. Because Mayan on her own could not find her way back to her original, not to say maker, but parents. Couldn't. But Amelia was like Jesus, the good news to bring Mayan back. Amelia was the saviour to save May Ann and to bring her back to us. And we got reunited. Obviously, we're very happy, very thankful. And friends, to all of us today, adults and children alike, Jesus is like the Amelia. Or rather, Amelia is like Jesus. The good news to bring us back to the maker, to our original design that we have gotten lost. May Ann was told strictly not to wander off on her own. But she did not keep to the original design. She went out of it and she reaped the consequences of being scared and cry. The same with all of us. And so Jesus today offers us this opportunity. Friends, I close very quickly because we still have a final song for the Operation 317. I close by telling you this. God is not an army commander. God does not control us, does not want to control us with strict rules and punishments, with do's and don'ts. The Bible is not meant to control you. But God desires for you and I to be His children and for Him to be a heavenly Father. As in the play, they quoted John 3.16, For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. Friends, do you want God's love this morning? Children, do you want God's love this morning? Can we just bow our heads, close our eyes? Very quickly, we're going to just have a short prayer. And then we're going to continue on with Operation 317 ending. Do you want God's love this morning, friends? Adults, whether you've been here to Calvary before or this is your first time to church, you've struggled through your life, 
自己靠自己 ，always depending on yourself. There is no need to do that kind of struggling. When God has given you a better alternative, children, do you desire to do better in your studies? Do you desire for more love in your family? Because God says, "I can do that for you as well." Do you want God's love? And God has told us very simply. I told you in John one twelve, that all we need to do is believe. Believe. There are no religious rituals to perform. There is no money to buy something. There is no activities to be done. Checklist to be filled up before you became a children of God, but just simply to believe. And so the beauty of it this morning, as we celebrate Children's Day, God's love is for the three-year-old right up to the ninety-three-year-old as well, because all of us can put our trust and our faith in Jesus Christ. With every head bowed, every eyes closed, if there is something that you are asking, wanting God to help you in in your life today, you say, God, I want Your love. I want Your original design. Help me, Lord. You may be a Christian, you may not be a Christian, but God wants to bless you this morning. Just put up your hand. Just put up your hand so I can see it, and God can see it, and we will pray for you. You want God's help? You want God's love? Just put up your hand. All over the sanctuary, children, adults, no need to look around. It's about you. That's right. Praise the Lord. Right at the back, you put up your hands too because God is looking. You're wanting God's love. You're wanting God's help. You don't want to struggle through life on your own. You want peace. You want harmony in your life. Hallelujah! Can we all stand together? Can we all stand together? You can open your eyes, all right? Hard to stand without opening your eyes. Now, in Calvary Church, we always open the altar and give a time for you to come for us to pray for you. But today, today we're going to do something special because today is Children's Day. So we're going to let the children come first, all right? So, adult, hold your horses, stay at your seats. We're going to let the children come down first. Because today is their special day, Father. In the name of Jesus, you see all the children, all the children who are standing here, the front platform, middle, and the back platform as well. And Father, together, standing with the children are the parents, and as well the adults. Each one standing here is saying, "Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I want you to bless me. Jesus, I need your love, Father. Whatever situations they are going through, whatever their circumstances." You know very well, and I ask that you will bless every single one of these children and parents and adults as well. Lord, you are our mighty God. You are our loving Father, and you will fill us with your love, with your peace, with your harmony, God. God, I pray for relationships to be restored. If there are families that are going through difficult times, restore relationships this morning, O、oh、Lord God. Relationships between parents and children, relationships between spouses. Father, in the name of Jesus, for the children that are fearful, whatever fears they may have, in Jesus' name, set them free, Lord God. Let them know. Let them be bold. Let them be so confident in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ that when they stand with their friends, when they go to school, they will not be afraid of the bully. They will not be afraid of difficult people. But they will know that Jesus loves and cares for them. Father, we who are adults, we struggle like children too. We have our difficulties, and we thank you this day, Children's Day. Heavenly Father, you are mindful of us. Bless us, we pray. This morning, Children's Day, is a wonderful time for you to become God's child. Every head bow, every eyes closed, all over the auditorium. If this morning you have not believed, and you say, "I want to believe. I want to be the child of God. I want to come back to my Maker, to the original design." Just put your hand up. Say, "I want to believe," and we will pray for you. Just put your hand up. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your love for me. Thank you for your love for me. This morning, this morning, I want to be your child. I want to be your child. I want to follow you. Be my God and my Savior. Be my God and my Savior. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I give you my life. I give you my life. I will follow you for the rest of my life. Follow you for the rest of my life. I will follow your ways. Follow your ways. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.